this is a weekend where you put everything together. You know, we have to win three games in a series against a great team, and that's really what it comes down to. It's not a question of if we can beat them, it's we can beat them. Can we do it at the right time? We have the capability of winning every series now. This tournament showed that we're not at a stage where we have to question, like, are we actually good enough? It's more so focusing on how we want to be good enough. I take it one game at a time, and when we got to that game five, I was ready to win it. Things went a little wrong for us. Yeah, this summer was tricky when it just came down to Ryan and Rain being on the team. Yeah, so rebuilding's always tough, especially since Tim and I are pretty underhyped, underrated. Like, E United has not been talked about, even though they've consistently been at the top. I think that we've really stepped up in how we want to build our team. And so we found some solid players, and we're, we're now in that process of, of making it a team again making it that cohesive system that we've, we're, we're known for. All in all, I mean, we had six different options that we were trialing with. Um, our roster could have looked really different. Coming off top four placings, obviously we think we have a great core, especially adding Aiden in there. Just finding the best overall talent in the fourth position for us was a priority. Yeah, I suspect it was one of the few players that's like probably the only player that we were able to uh, to ask our management and say, hey, this is the player, this is it, this is him. He's always been that crafty, uh, in and out of fights, just kind of sliding his way through everything, um, just kind of slaying everything in his path. I, I love the way he plays. No one, no one plays like Aiden. After after a month or month or so of working it out, we finally got him, and we're super happy to have him on the team. He's been nothing but positive. He's been hardworking and, uh, and he, he feels like a trio now on this team rather than just a Tim and I as a duo. So as a player I feel like I'm always going to bring up and just be honest with what I think will get us to be the best team. I won't just sit back like if I'm hearing stuff that I don't think is best for the team I'll stand up for it and I'll always say my part and I won't just let things slide if I don't truly believe that it's the best for us and when I'm playing my game I feel like I'm unstoppable. We had Manny on the roster for a little while. Um, he wanted to go back to native, KCP, his boys. Um, completely understandable. We love teaming with Manny, um, but we also wanted to make sure that he's in an environment that he wants to be in. Nothing but respect for that decision. I love that. Coming out of that trade, we ended up getting sniped down. Not trying to lean on Cod, but he just reminds me a lot of Clayster, someone that has his heart on his sleeve, uh, someone that has that pop-off potential as well, someone that's just bringing a little bit of that electricity to the team that can literally make game-changing plays if things are going their way. Honestly, when it comes to just finding the right group of teammates, it really is just, do you want to play with these people? Um, and so joining United with the squad, you know, it, right away it felt like they wanted me on the team. And it was like, let's get to work. Let's you know make this professional. It's a little older of a squad. I have people who I relate to more in that sense. And it's just you know this. Let's show up. Let's get to work. And this is our job. And let's you know do what we can to to make the best of it. So it's a definitely a better environment for me specifically. That's about the biggest pickup we can ask for in terms of individual skill and what he brings to the team outside of it. We we see his strengths. We see how good he is. And it's all about getting him. Um, into our system. It was great teaming with him on EG. It just sucked that the entire team, just like the team in general, not just an individual, but the whole team collectively. When I joined EG back in the day, it was kind of like the ship was already sinking and everyone already had their turmoil and they were kind of done teaming with each other. So it's nice to get a fresh start to team with Eric for sure. I think that term sniped on, you know, I, I look at that myself and I think to myself, you know, like I've had a lot of people, you know, doubt me in Halo Infinite or whatever it is, and I think I'm effing sniped down. You know, like that is what I look back at and I'm like that that's who I represent and, and who I wanna represent and I, I see what that is and I hold myself to that snipe down standard. Um, and so I think I think I'm just trying to come out to these last two Halo Infinite events and really just show what I can do and, and that I can be a, a big piece to a successful team. Nice and cozy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is how close I want to be with my teammates. Yeah. <laughs>
think one of the main issues with this roster is how late this team change has arrived coming into Orlando. It's very difficult to build that chemistry and find out how these teams are going to be playing against you when you don't really have a style as of yet. That being said, the individuals that are on this roster, if they do catch fire, if they do get that chemistry, suddenly E United become an underdog in this tournament that really could disrupt the top heavy side of some of these teams. Because E United, after the Grunt Classic performance, people are like, ah, you know, are they going to be able to do that well? Don't count them out, because genuinely some of the players on this are the best we've ever seen in Halo history. Yeah, our pool is pretty pretty sweet for us. We've got two foreign teams who we're expected to do well against. We have the fourth place open bracket team, or like the four seeded, uh, which which should be good for us. And then uh, we got Cloud9, who they've been looking rocky recently. I think it's a really good pool for us. I think this is a, a, a pool that is going to help us build up into uh, the rest of the weekend. And I think, you know, we have some good rosters. Cloud9 is a, they're a changed up roster. They've been, you know, performing well. And I think they're a little rocky at the moment at, at the same time. Space Station has had some really high ups and then they've, they've struggled against some of the teams that they were supposed to beat in this last online tournament as well. So I think all of us coming into this are really trying to come out there and prove something. And it's going to be a big start to the weekend to get a, to a hot start for us. I think we got two matches on the main stage the first day, so excited to just get into it and see what we can do on the big stage. They lose Spartan, they lose King Nick, and we're thinking that this United roster is going to fall. Well, Ryan and Ryan have something to say about it. Heading into that, we were really confident. We had practiced, you know, at the tournament on Thursday against a couple of really good teams and played super well against them. So we knew our game was there for LAN. Personally, I always match really well against C9 every single time that I play them. Let's just remind ourselves what Cloud9 have achieved so far this year. They are yet to place outside of the top two. They are yet to not be in a grand final when it comes to the live event in Warren. All right, let's get it right here, baby. Right here, baby. Let's go. Get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final match of the day. It's Cloud9 versus the United. Closing on that ball, Spectre. Trying to find the kill onto Bounder, does beautifully well. Almost turns two, and that's great news for E United. Three players taken down from Cloud9. Someone can do here, quite try a new. And the launch oh, reel! The backwack timing of Snipe Down. The boys got your back in a moment like that. Snipe Down's gonna pick up another kill and keep two dead, make it three dead. It's a great push from Penguin and Stellar on the Neons as well. Snipe Down left on his own, Snipe Down somehow finds one. Stella trying to clean him up, and Snipe Down somehow turns it around! Oh my god, who else would you put him in the triple kill for Snipe Down? Snipe Down, not just with the slaves, but with the objective work as well! C9 are flying in, but they cannot get the touch on the ball! Snipe Down's gonna see what he can do with this last rocket. Get a kill, that's what he's gonna do, it's what he does best, and he's gonna do damage to Bounder as well. He gets cleaned up immediately, Stella, you're gonna find yourself in the BR of Snipe Down, another four shot, coming in from Eric Groner. Huge slaying here coming in from the United to 13. So Cloud9, though they find themselves too dead at the moment. Ryan Oob getting excited on oh. that double kill. That actually could be the icing on the cake. Huge. Not only is it the kills, but also Rocket secure for United. Oh, Bound comes off spawn. He knows he has to fly. And with 10 points only needed here by E United to win this game number one. There's no way for Cloud9 to close the gap. It's gonna be one to zero. So heading into C9, we were super confident that we could beat them. We knew that they were kind of in shambles. We had practice, you know, at the tournament on Thursday uh, against a couple of really good teams and played super well against them. So we knew our game was there for LAN. You can say Snipe Down's back. Some say he never left. Here we go then, game number two is live. You can see we're flying our way through. We've got weapons. You try and make a push down one of these hallways. Hold on, oh. a Spectre will do something like that. I got three. Two, one, go. Top car, fuck him up. And bottom, and watch your back, watch your back now. Behind me, behind me. Watch out, watch out. Can we go forward? 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 Can you gotta make their time with the push penguin. That's done for, that's the game! Oh, oh, oh. Let's go, baby! So on paper, people would probably, going into this, this event, write us off a little bit. Um, we haven't performed very well online. We know we show up on land. Uh, so we're feeling very confident going into that. Cloud9's back in the series. 
one game away from tying it up, but EU United still one game away from winning Pool C here. It's 132 to zero. At the moment, C9 are rolling. Down by 130. If you're in the United camp now, though, you just think, whatever they've just done to us, we have to do back to them. United, oh. they are closing in on Cloud9. And what is that doing for the mentality of C9 here? And now only down by about 33 points. Slide down has a sniper rifle as well. Eco's gonna feel it in the shoulder. Five points and that gap is closing. That gap is minute and E United going to a lead. And Rain has a sniper rifle. Whatever it might be, damage from Rain. This could be the game. The assist will come in there. Kills will be traded though, not over just yet. Less than 20 points to go here oh for E United. Oh my God, Rain is going wild. Double kill in the feed now. 10 points no! to go and a triple kill for Rain. Are you kidding me? What a time to do it. Triple kill and it might be the game. Snipe down picks up another. The comeback. And after beating them, it felt good. I haven't felt that feeling since probably the first season of Halo 5. So it felt amazing to beat them. And it definitely is a reminder to the reason why I love playing Halo and competing in Halo. It was a weird feeling beating Cloud9 because they've knocked us out at so many tournaments. They've always been uh, the tough ones to beat for us. And uh, to, beat, to beat them in the way that we did this weekend, it really started it off right for us. That was the first time that I've beaten C9 as well in this game. It was really nice to go up against my old teammate uh, Bound. I'm, you know, I, I, I do like Bound. Him and I banter a lot, and it was fun to have a little rivalry match, I suppose, if you want to call it that, um, against them. And it felt good to definitely beat the reigning champions. They're, you know, they've gotten first in two out of the three events and placed no less than top two. And they're, you know, still out there competing to to get back to that spot right now. So beating a team that is of that caliber uh, feels really good for us, and it, it is a testament to how good we are as well. Like I said, we've just learned so much about this E United squad. This is not just a team who's thinking top six, top four. This is a team who is thinking about a championship here. We went in a little more confident, played a little faster, played the game at our pace, and I think that showed in the games. Yeah, Saturday was kind of a identical situation to Friday. Um, our competition scaled as we played throughout the day. We got to play Kratos' open bracket team to start it off on Saturday. Oh, we all knew we all knew Aiden was excited to play Kratos. We've heard about that rivalry ever since the split up, ever since he joined our team. Um, so we were looking forward to it, not just as a quote unquote warm up match, but also as that little rivalry gone. So that was fun, yeah. So going into the last match of our pool play versus Kratos, I was feeling very confident. If I could have chose any single team to be in our bracket, it would have been Kratos' team. So I'm very thankful I got to play them. And going into it, I knew I wasn't going to say GG's. I know he prefers that anyway. When, whenever I used to team with him, he would say that he hates how people come and say GG's to him. And I was like, that's perfect for me. I don't have to come say GG's to you. You don't want me to. Like, this works out great. But I knew we were going to smoke them. Then we go and play G2. Uh, the guys go and win that match, which was huge. Obviously, that's an expected win for us, but G2 has made some really healthy changes with barcode. You know, they're looking pretty strong as well, and they were also a little under practice, but came out with the win. Let's go, let's go, baby! And then last match of the night, uh, Optic. We're obviously the underdogs in that series, but I still feel like we're right there. Like, if we're playing our game and really doing what we need to, we can win that. So not letting it go the distance is going to be really, really important. Will the After Gaming War Machine keep rolling on, or will it be ground to a halt by United? I'll tell you what, if anyone could do it, I think maybe it could be United. I wouldn't have said that before this tournament started, but United have looked like a different team to what we saw online. The green wall chance ring out already. We haven't even kicked off. Green wall going to set up this inside here. One goes down, but it's a trade. Repulsive oh. play! Hits the body and finds the face. Killing spree, double kill. Loose, it's already cooking. And it's Formal who loses out, but it's not for long. A killing frenzy oh. for Trippy! 248, it's gonna take over to 250. Up to gaming. Look flawless so far in this tournament. 
We know how Optic plays. We know what we need to do against Optic, and that's just not make mistakes. Optic Gaming have always looked that extra tier above everyone else so far. Silence. We'll surround Recharge here as no one wants to make that first move. They pushed together, Snipe down was the bait. He got that initial damage and then Ryan Noob and the rest of the squad, they followed in and Ryan Noob gets a big Ooh. double. And now United starting to light up a little bit, only four kills behind. Here, top tower, Gordon KK. Alright, let's shoot tower, let's shoot tower, shoot tower. Wait, see Flag guys on Camouflage to boot. Has to be effective, APG. Will miss the headshot wow. by just a pixel. Sends the grenade back to sender. It's three kills. Oh, that separates them. Unfortunately, Ryan who goes down and it means it's another four kill gap, making a five kill gap. Formal's on a tear. And just like that, no, Formal! Almost gets himself an overkill. Up the gaming need to. They've done so well at every single time in United. Think they're back in it. They rip it right away from them. And Snipe Dell's the final member of the United to hit the respawn. They were just really good. Sometimes they get all the weapons and sometimes the game is really hard. That's how it goes against them. It's still tough to count this United roster out despite how good Optic are playing. It's already Rockets, it's already Overshield, it's already a flag from Optic Gaming. How do United respond? It's Ryan Oob who gets the Rockets and the Overshield. Now you have to make this count. The slobber knocker, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Snipe down with the Bulldog. He gets one. APG has his dog looking on. Snipe down, got it in his hand. He's also got the flag. Pulls it out. APG wants a fight, wants a scrap. When he comes out on top, two kills though. Now in favor of the United. They've got a flag on the move. Can the United escort this one? Can he slide it home? Yes, he can! Snipe down. He was doubted. He was criticized. He was underrated. Undervalued, perhaps, on phase. And look at the performance he's putting in here against arguably the best team in the land. Double kill for Ryan Hill. Time is going to run out, and he United are going to get on the board. It's 2-1 here. We played pretty well. We took a game off them on, on, the, on our best game type. And it showed that, like, hey, if we play the game that we want to play, we might be able to beat these guys. Ten seconds is all that remains. The ball has been reset. Three members of the United are over in position. They scooped up the ball, but it's food and drink for the green wall. And Suspector's in big trouble. Four dead. Three, one, the series score. And Optic Gaming are in the winner finals. It shows that other teams are just incredibly good at playing their normal style, and we have to pull out something different to beat them. Optic is, I think, without a doubt, the best team in the game at the moment. They're the most consistent team. And going into that series, I think, you know, we didn't play our best, but we still took a game from them, and I think we had a lot of positives to take from that series. There were a lot of unfortunate things that went down, but overall, playing a team like that pretty close is, uh, is a great feeling. Yeah, so we're top six right now. After we beat D2, that secured us top six. We got top 12 after winning our pool. Sentinels for top four, and then we'll play C9 or someone else on their side of the bracket for top three, and then we'll play the loser of phase and optic for top two. Personally, I, I always enjoy playing Sentinels. I think they are, you know, one of the best teams or the reigning champions of the previous tournament and I live actually at the same apartment complex as Frosty, so we always have a little banter and rivalry going on there. If E United can come out hot and take game one, they can win this series. They can dictate how this series is going to be played. Slayer Cutlist will be an absolute mayhem match. We've got Sentinels versus E United on the main stage, and your Championship Sunday starts now. That's going to be three down, four down for Sentinels. EU oh, going man. off to a strong start. E United will get B and C. Oh, control and Ryan Noob with a big shot. And E United managed to get possession of C here. All these bait and switches, these shake and bakes are going in the favor of E United. You can see if Alice is here by realizing he's done this for the next oh, second. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Return it to the sender! Pulse. I remember seeing Penguin and Lucid doing it really early on. But outside of that, we're now seeing all these pros. Oh my god, shock rifle, nasty shot. Ooh. 
Uh, e United is absolutely dominating. Frosty and Lethal combined only nine kills. That is something you don't hear every day. Watch out, I'm looking the fuck out. Dead. 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 Lethal one. Dead. Let's go! Right. Let's go! Let's go! Three shotty, three shotty. Yeah, three here. Yeah, cuts, 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 cuts. Be down. Are rockets of 20 guys? Yo, they're stacking a lot, guys. Two, two, two cuts, two cuts. cuts. Okay, guys, all good. With the way that E United have developed as a squad here in Orlando, they are really fragging for one another, and that has been their strength of this game so far here. The scoreline doesn't lie. This is E United domination through and through. Snipe down can push because he knows that they have him with their tail tucked between their legs. He's gonna send those spikers across. That's one, that's two, <laughs> one more remaining, and E United will go up two to zero in this match. There it is. And there's game 50, Snipe out saying, let's go. I think we played the first two games nearly flawlessly on how we want to play the game. Winning those two games gave us so much confidence. So I think when you go up 2-0 in a series, you know, you're kind of like, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's win this game three, get this series over with. And so maybe you let off the gas a little bit. And it all comes down to this for Sentinels. If you're E United, shut them down. Smart, smart play with that oddball to win round number one. Much needed here for Sentinels. You also have that over shield. Big shot from Snake Fight. Come on, come here, come here, come here. Snake Fight. Two there, two there. Airbus. Hey, I, 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 got, I got this guy. I think. Three dead, though, three dead. All dead, all dead. Oh, Snipe down falls to the heat wave of Snake Fight. Are they going to scrap these last two seconds? I don't two, know. He might be one. able to get away from this. That's going to be Sentinels on the board. Game three, things went a little wrong for us. We stopped thinking about how we want to play the game. We thought, stopped thinking about how we want to rotate on the map. And from that, we just couldn't break it. Uh, fearful of just jumping the hill too early. Frosty had a one shot right in front of him. Another player's going to be hanging him out there. It's going to be sniped down. He goes down. He wants to see what his teammate is going to do. And then he'll go in there and respond. He's also looking at Death Screen. Frosty has a small blip on Death Screen. His health is almost right around there the corner. When he can jump up and surprise him. There's the double. He knows Snipe Down's a little weak, and he says, I don't need to challenge. I'll get time. And that's going to basically be a triple. All you have to do is just prevent your opponents from getting control of the hill, and that clock will be the worst enemy of your opponent. Snipe Down inside of the hill one more time, but it doesn't matter. Orlando, a game five. It comes down to Slayer. He goes all the way towards that back flag. You see, Angle slip around. Here's the clump from the e United. Who's going to win this exchange? It looks like e United and Sentinel straight kill for kill. Frosty 1v1 against the Spectre. Shrimp gets a triple. Be one of the Achilles heels here for e United on this map. Whereas previously, they could lock down these players with Sentinel. You can be a little too sneaky and look at them just getting picked apart in inferior positioning. Sentinel's off to a strong lead. Yeah, it just feels like United, their only answer right now has just been get together, hold hands, and we'll figure it out later. 20 kills. Oh! oh before they get one kill. One more kill remaining. It's going to be Suspector Frosty. Who better to get the final frag? And Sentinel complete their reverse sweep. Do you believe in miracles? Because for Sentinel, it has happened back to back. Game five and a crushing defeat for E United. This is the most painful loss of my career at least in recent memory. Maybe the world's back in 2016, but it's 2022, it's been a while. Th this match hurt, um, there's no doubt about that. But the beautiful thing about Halo is that there's so many mistakes and there's theater of it, there's film of it. We can take a look at that, get back to the drawing board and improve, that's all we can do. And it, it hurts, but uh, that was after two weeks of practice. After seeing everything positive about it, it's like, hold on a second, we're start, like, uh, starting to believe in it. We, we start seeing, oh, hold on, we're actually beating these players and the game's hard for them and, and, and we win rather than just winning our 1v1s and winning, winning battles around the map. We actually win as a team. Overall, I mean, I think there's a lot of positives to take away from it because as frustrating as it is losing the way we did to them, uh, there's only one thing we can do and it's just go back to the drawing board and, and learn from that mistake. I'm very confident in what we can do considering the amount of practice we had and just like what everyone expected from us coming into this tournament, like the entire time, like I knew once we got to the tournament and once we're on land that anything could happen and if we're all playing our game, I'm confident that we could have won this event and I'm confident that we can win Worlds too. We have a lot of trust in each other, I have no doubt about that, that we all believe that we are a fantastic team that we can win an event 
and I have complete faith in all three of my teammates. And you know, it's it's great to have someone like Kyle behind us with a lot of confidence in some of the calls he makes. And uh, we all have a re really level head, so I don't think this is something that'll st uh, set us back at all going into Worlds, which is the main goal. You know, that's the most important tournament of the year. It's not it's not Orlando, and these are all stepping stones for the big picture. I think outside of placing first at a tournament, I think all of these guys are just looking to prove that. They're the best Halo players uh, before they potentially hang up the sticks or potentially you know, their career goes another direction. No one on our team has brought up the uh, thought of retiring, but we do have an older team. Uh, Snipe down, there's been rumors that he might go back to another game like Apex Legends after Worlds. Uh, Ryan and Rain are both in their upper 20s. We've seen players go into their early 30s and still dominate, but uh, you know, Ryan has won a, a few championships and I know he's really eager to get one, uh, especially Tim, uh, Suspector finally joining like a legendary team. I, I feel like he has the right pieces to finally get his first championship. Um, so I really think it's outside of like holding the trophy, it's just more about these guys proving like what they spend every single day, every minute uh, thinking about and trying to prove everybody wrong. We have to win three games in a series against a great team, and that's really what it comes down to, is just coming out. There's no room for errors, no rooms for coming out cold, and I think that was one thing that is extremely positive of us uh, on this weekend, and I think it bodes really well for us heading into Worlds.